All right. So number one here. So they're giving me a, some information. So we don't even really need to read all those words, blah, 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 whatever. So just make an A, B, C triangle. And then say A is 75 degrees. And then little a is 4. Now, where do we find little a? How do you know which side, when you draw the triangle, is little a? It's across from, right? Little a is across from angle. So here's angle a here. That means little a is over here across from it, right? Across from angle a is side little a. So it doesn't matter how you made the triangle. If you made capital A over here, up the top, whatever, that's all fine. It doesn't matter. But you just make little a across from big A, little b across from big B, little c across from big C, right? I think you know that. And then um, little b is 8, so that goes down here. All right, and they want to know, as you look down here, looks like they're just asking about angle b, aren't they? I would look, look ahead and go, oh, okay, because I'm not making you find everything like the homework did, because I know you don't got time for that on a test. So I'm just picking one thing, you know, then I know you could do everything, you know. So I'm just asking for angle b here. So you just look ahead, see what you want, go, oh, okay, okay, they just want angle b. So I just got to get my hands on angle B. So um, now, could I use could I use the law of sines? You always want to ask that first. Can I just use the law of sines? Yeah. Because and how do you know when you when you can use? You don't have to go to the law of cosines. How do you know when you can use the law of sines? When you have a matched pair. Good. See, I have A with A. So if you have A with A, or if you have B with a B, or if you have, if you have numbers on both, exactly right, you can do it. So I'll go. Sine 75 degrees over 4 is sine of B over B, right? So that's sine A over A is sine B over B, basically, isn't it? It's, it's this pair over that pair. Uh, good. And now how do we solve for the B? First thing is you, I always show, you can cross multiply or just multiply by the 8, same thing. I'll just cross multiply. So um, then I get sine, so... 8 sine 75 is 4 sine B divided by the 4. Boom, like that. So I got sine B alone. Then I got to do inverse sine, don't I? So I'm just going to write it all out and then calculate it all. That way there's no rounding or anything like that. So capital B will be inverse sine of that whole right side. 8 sine 75 degrees over 4. Is that okay? Just go like that. Why is the sine like oh, the sine 75? Isn't it like... <coughs> It's either way. Yeah, you can put the signs on top or the um, sides on top. Either way. As long as you do them consistent on both of them, right? Yeah, it'll go, it'll go either way. And when you cross multiply, you get to the same, you'll get to the same exact thing I got. Right? See what I mean? If I wrote 4 over sine 75 is 8 over sine B. When I cross multiply, see what I'm going to get? 4 sine B. 4 sine B. And the other two, 8 sine 75, 8 sine. It'll be the same thing, so it doesn't matter. Um, okay. So we good to there, so then hit the buttons in the calculator. I'm getting, let's see, sine 75. So then I hit sine inverse. Now the answer I get, oh, I get an error. I get an error on my calculator, which means no triangle. B, was that the answer, B? Yeah. Yes, good. Makes sense how we know it's no triangle? It's just not possible. No triangle that fits that reality. So you got an air, no triangle. All right. On with so number two, okay, triangle, same kind of thing. A, B, C, B is 10 degrees. Little a is 4, little c is 7. Okay, so can I use law of signs? No, I have no matched up pair. I, I don't have... The angle and the side across. I, I don't know that one. I don't have the side and the angle across. I don't know that one. I don't have the side and the I don't know that one. See how there's never a matchup with a side and an angle across from it? So, so no angle and side across. So we cannot use law of signs. At least not right now. Start with law of cosines. Huh? We've got to start with the law of the cosines. Oh, I'm not even reading the question. Read the question. That's important. First step. Yes, thank you. Wendy, uh, find the area. So I'm not even paying attention. Find the area. So forget all that stuff and find the area. So how do you find the area? 
Wendy, I'd prefer next time you just say that right away. Not let me go so far. All right, find the area. So how do we find the area? What's the area formula? Um, do you remember that one special one we have? It's basically one half, one, any side times another side times the sine of the angle between. I don't know, because they wrote it one half AB sine A or some kind of way or sine C, whatever. I don't want you to be confused by that. Really, it could be any two sides. It doesn't have to be A and B or B and C or whatever. It's any two sides and the side of the angle between those two sides. Does that make sense? That's what the area formula says. So do I have two sides and the angle in between? It's exactly what I have. Call them A, B, C, Joe, Tom, or Harry. It doesn't matter. It's any two sides and the angle in between. So, all right, one-half, seven times four times sine ten. that makes sense? I see all that because I don't want you to be confused if they give you A instead of B or B instead of C and get thrown off. It's any two sides, angle between. So, um, okay, so what's that going to be? Uh, times sine. Make sure you're in degree mode, you know, you mess you up if you're in the wrong mode. I think you can just use degree mode for this whole test, unless there's something I'm forgetting. So I got 2.43. That rounds to 2. Answer C. Yeah. Good on that? 1 half times 7 times 4 times sine 10. Calculator for the whole test, parts 1 and 2. A uh, plane flying a, st a straight course observes a mountain at a bearing of 32.5 to the right of its course. At that time, the plane is 6 kilometers from the mountain. A short time later, the bearing to the mountain becomes 42.5. How far is the plane from the mountain when the second bearing is taken? It's kind of confusing without a picture, huh? So um, here's what I suggest. Just kind of draw it out Whoop, down here. So I'm going to draw it. Here's a plane, Okay. And it's, a, it's going on a straight course. I'll just say straight up, whatever. You could do right. It doesn't matter. They just said straight. So they didn't say, they didn't say what. So I'll go straight up. And then it says it, um, observe, it observes, it looks and sees a mountain 32.5 to the right. So there's some kind of mountain over here. Let's say, let's say the mountain's right about there. Some kind of mountain. Okay. And that mountain, it, it observes it. So there's, there's its looking line, right? That's its line of observation. And that line is 32.5 to the right of its course. So say its course is straight up. I just did straight up because that's easy to start with. You could have done straight, right, straight, anything. This is, well, I guess you couldn't do right because this is to the right of your course. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, you could have, whatever. 32.5 to the right of your course. Does that make sense? That picture so far? That's the main part. So there's some kind of course. The plane is actually, you know, flying along this course and it observes, it looks 32.5 to the right and sees the mountain. Right? That's its angle of observation for the mountain. Okay. Then, uh, six kilom at, at that time, the plane is six kilometers from the mountain. This is six. Six kilometers. At that time, when it first makes that observation, right? Is that good? I know a lot of the battle on this is getting the right picture. Once the triangle's there, you can all snap it out probably, huh? Short time later, so it keeps flying on its course. It started here, made the observation from here, flying its course. The bearing, so, so, so short time later, what happens? Well, that means it, it flies further. Let's just say there. Let me, let me back this up. Let me squeeze this angle in here a little Closer, so we have room 32.5 right there, right? A short time later, so here's P later. Here's P at the start, the plane, the start. Here's, here's the plane later flying on its straight course. It's not headed directly towards the mountain, right? It's just observing the mountain to its right. A short time later, the bearing to the mountain is 42.5. Now, this is a bigger angle. That, that looks right, doesn't it? See how that angle is growing? No, that wasn't right. Let me try that again. Why is that the wrong angle? Because it's this angle. It's bearing to the right. That angle is bigger, though. 42.5 to the mountain. You see, that? see how it's getting closer to the mountain and the bearing to the right observation angle is growing. How are we doing? Is that making sense? In fact, let me... 
It doesn't look quite right. Let me put that mountain even a little further away. You don't have to. I mean, that's all. That'll work. Put that mountain right about here. And then this one looks a little more like 40, 42.5. So there's the way the plane's flying. So everybody see how I came up with that picture? Does that make sense with the words that they're saying? That takes practice to get the hang of that. Is that good? So the plane is flying straight, just straight, and it keeps making observations to the right of its direction, right? So what they say, observes a mountain at 32.5 to the right of its course. That's at a bearing. And the bearing to the mountain the second time, you know, to the right of its course again, is 42.5. So that's always to the right. See how I, I always go to the right of my course. To the right. See, at first I accidentally started to put the angle down here. But that's not right. That's not to the right of my course. You always got to start with your course and then to the right. That's like those, what is it, north, 42 east kind of things, right? But in this case, they just said your course to the right of your course. So you always start with your course, go to the right. Okay. Um, now let's try to crank out the answer. So now that we have this, how are we going to, what do they want me to do? How far is the plane from the mountain at the second time? How far? They want this, this right here, don't they? The distance the plane is from the mountain at the second observation. Okay, so we have a little triangle. We have X, we have 6, we have 32.5. What are we going to do? Can we get this angle here? How do we get that angle there? Subtract from what? 180. A straight line holds 180, doesn't it? Right? If I'm going straight this way towards the door and I turn completely around and go the other way, that's a 180 degree turn, isn't it? Halfway around. That's half of 360, half of a whole circle. Right? If you're going straight up on the plane and you turn to go straight down, these two total 180, don't they? One side of a straight line totals 180. That's halfway of all the way around, being 360, huh? Does that make sense? So two angles that make a straight line make 180. So this 42.5 and whatever this is, so if I take 180 minus 42.5, would you get 137.5? So this angle here has to be... 137.5 degrees for these two to make 180 because they're together make a straight line, right? Everybody good with that? So now I have, why did I do that? Because now I have, an, I have these two across from each other. I can do law of sines because now I have an angle and the side across and I can do side across, I don't know, with that angle and find x using the law of sines. Is that good? So we say um, x over sine 32.5 degrees, equal, right, because these two, these two, equals these two, 137, whoop, start with the 6, huh, because I, I started with the side, the x, so I better start with the side. Yeah, don't reverse that. Law of sines, you can go either way. You put the sines on the top or the sides on the top. It doesn't matter. Just be consistent. Whatever you do on the first one, do on the other one. I just thought it would be easy to start with X. It doesn't really matter, though. So, um, so if I started with the X on one side, the side, I've got to start with the side length on the other one and put the sine on the bottom, right? Just be consistent. Sine 137.5. So I put both the sines on the bottom. You, last problem, I put them both, or two problems, I put them both on the top. Doesn't matter. Just be consistent. Diagonal, diagonal. So I get x sine 137.5 degrees equals 6 sine 32.5. Divide by the sine 137.5. Sine 137.5. Boom. There it is. Whatever that is, that should be my answer. 6 sine 32.5. Divided by sine of five. I'm getting 4.77, and that rounds 4.8. D, 3, D, good.
Good on that. Kind of tough, huh? Especially getting a picture. So practice. I so what I had to do, practice those picture making. So bearing to the right. Bearing to the right. Questions on that one? Oh, this is one. Yeah, this I do know what this is. This is the one I did on the board, huh? Let me do it real quick. So this is the one with the wrong answer. Yeah, the answer is going to be A, but they messed up. This should be 48 degrees and this 62, huh? It's got the wrong answer. That's what it should be. Let's, let's see it. So, so here we have A, B, C. They tell me B is, so angle A is 70 degrees, little b is 5, little c is 6. And, well, it looks like they want me to find a lot of things. Um, yeah, they want little a first off. So I'll say, okay, I'm going to get my hands on little a. So... Can I do law of signs on this one? No. Nope. Yeah, I cannot do law of signs because they never give me a side in the angle across from it. Right? Not law of signs. No side and angle across. I never have it. I have this side but not the angle across. I have this angle but not the side across. I have this side but not the angle across. I never have a matchup with a side and angle across. So I can't use law of sines. I never have a complete complete pair to make a fraction. So I got to use must, must use law of cosines, huh? We're going to have to use the law of cosines. So what's the law of cosines say? Well, it says any side squared is the other two sides squared minus 2 times side times side times cosine of an angle. Now, this angle is one that goes with that side, right? I mean, it's written different ways. It's written with A outside, B outside, C outside. I don't want you to be confused by all those different versions. Basically, it says any side squared is the other two sides squared minus 2 times those sides. Those are the same sides. Times the cosine of an angle, and that angle is the angle across from that side. Like if this is C, then that is C. Right? That's how law cosines works. So um, which angle do I have? A. That's the one angle I have. So this is going to be cosine of A, which is 70 degrees. Right? So what side is going to go out here? A. Does that make sense? These are both A for this problem. Am I losing you? Am I making any sense here? These are both A. Right? Because the angle they gave, whatever angle they gave you, maybe here's a better way to say it, whatever angle they gave you, that's the side you're going to be finding in the law of cosines. They gave me angle A, I'm finding, well, I guess I can make it a little A, whatever. Doesn't matter to me. Little A. All right. So little A squared is little B squared plus little C squared minus 2 times B times C times cosine 70. That angle is the, side across, is the angle across from little a. All right, so a squared is whatever b squared is. 5 squared, that's a 5, plus 6 squared minus 2 times 5 times 6 times cosine 70. If you work all that, and then you've got to square root it to get little a. And so I did all that, and I got little a as 6.4, but, but you want to use more accuracy, right? As we talked about, minus 60 times cosine 70. I'm getting 6.36229. I mean, that's plenty of accuracy right there, and it's more than I need. So I'll just stop there. That's little a. So, so far we're thinking, oh, it's like it's one of those two maybe. How do we find which one? Well, we've got to go on and find angle B now, don't we? Because they have different angle Bs. So let's go on and find angle B or C. It doesn't really matter. I'll find angle B. Now, how do I find angle B, this angle here? Well, now I'll use law of cosines. Everybody with me? So let me come up here, and I'm going to use law of cosines up in this zone. You can use law of sine. Oh, did I say cosines? I mean law of sines. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to use law of sines. I've already used law of cosines. I'm going to use law of sines now. Now, use law of sines. Okay, so how to use the law of sines? You know. 
So I'm going to do B with B, and I'm going to do A with A. Nope, that's not A, that's C. Um, a with A. I'm going to use B with B and A with A. We good? Why? Because now we know little a is this 6.36229. Now we have these two. We have the two across. We can use law of sines. So that means sine of 70 over the 6.36229 is B, which it were sine, sine of B over Five. See, I put both the signs on the top this time. doesn't matter. Like I said, top or bottom. When you use law of signs, either way, signs on the top or signs on the bottom, it doesn't matter. Just be consistent. See how I'm doing that? Everybody good with that? Because now I have an angle and the side across from it. Whenever you've got that, time to use law of signs, isn't it? So that's why we started with law of cosines because we did not have an angle and the side across. Got one of the sides. Use more accuracy than you're going to need in the end. And then you do your work here, and you'll find when you do the work, B is going to be inverse sine, and I just jump to it, of 5 times sine 70 over 6.36229, and you'll find that B is actually rounds to 48 degrees. That's why I'm saying they messed up in their rounding. It's answer A with 48 degrees and 62. Chinu. Yeah, I did it several times. You do 6.4, it'll come out to like 47.2. Uh, yeah. Oh, I see. So they, so they just rounded right away. That's different than how the homework did it, though, huh? Yeah. Round lengths to the nearest tank, tenth, whatever, round the lengths. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, the, the problem with that is in the homework, we got used to leaving more accuracy. And that's a better way to do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Good point, Chinu. Yeah, go ahead. Let's, just to be consistent, let's just do it like the homework. I'll make sure on the test that the answers are right the way we did it in the homework. So, um, which means I need to check those out and see what, see what I put in there. I didn't realize that they were going to do this different. Yeah, so we want to use more accuracy. The answer should be 48. I'm not going to try to trick you. I'm not, how about this? How about I guarantee I won't give you an answer that's one degree off and go, ha, 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 it was none of the above. You should have done that. I'll make none of the above, like, way off. I mean, I mean more than one degree at least, right? So, 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 if you, so, so let me give you this comfort. If you're taking the exam on Wednesday and you do some calculation thinking, you go, oh, I'm getting the same as answer A, but I'm just one degree off, grab answer A. That's not none of the above. I'm not going to try to trick you that way. I'll make sure that none of the aboves are more than one degree off. That'd be the only time to grab none of the above. How about that? We got enough to worry about without being picky like this. All right, so it's answer A. On we go. So number five, magnitude. That, this one will be a little bit easier. So remember how to do the magnitude of a vector? It's just the square root of one of the numbers. It's just Pythagorean, huh? A squared plus B squared is C squared kind of thing. Square root of a squared plus b squared. So square root of 25 plus 144. Square root of 169. 13? Oh, there's a couple 13s. All right, they also want the angle. So how do we get the angle? Yeah, that's the harder part, huh? So let me help you. Let me get this out of the way and help you with that. I, I thought we were done. Um, how do we get the angle? So there's the length. So we're answering either a, b, or d, or maybe none of the above. How do we get the angle? There's a couple different ways. Um, I, I'm going to go with the way I showed you before. I still think that's best. If you do the show me an example buttons, they do a little different way, which is fine. I think it's easier, though, just to always do inverse tangent. So here's my suggestion. Let me be clear. I don't think I was super clear in the homework about this. Let me be really clear now. To find, to find the angle. Yeah, you're right. Uh, graph. Graph first. So first graph it. Just put it on a graph. What am I talking about? Well, it's back 5, up 12, right? So it's, it's back 5, up a whole bunch. So my point is, find out which quadrant it's in. It's in the second quadrant. You don't need to be super exact in your graph. We're not going to do anything super exact. But it's, it's back 5, up 12. You with me? It's in quadrant 2. All right? And then do tangent inverse of positive b 
over or J over I, however you want to say it. J over the I. The J number over the I number. Positive only. Inverse tangent. Then adjust for, so th this would be a first quadrant answer. Then adjust for actual quadrant. Is that making sense? What I'm saying is just do tan inverse of positive J over I. What, why? Why are we doing tan inverse? Because J is rise over run. Or Y values. Remember, remember, tangent is Y over X, sine over cosine. Remember that? You can see right here, right? If I put angle theta right here, remember what tangent is? Remember Sokotoa? Sokotoa tangent is what? Opposite over adjacent. See how that's the 12 over the 5? It's always, it's always going to be the Y or the, the J over the I. The J is up down. The I is sideways, huh? It's always going to be the J over the I. Tangent is always rise over run. In other words, it's like a slope. It's what it is. Tangent is sine, which is always Y values, over cosine X values, huh? Making all those connections, right? So, um, so yeah, so you can always just put this on your 3x5 card. This will be important because we have a few of these. It will be real important that you can do this. It will be the same every time. It will be easy if you get used to it. Tan inverse of the positive J over the positive I, that'll give you a first quadrant answer, and then adjust for the correct quadrant. So here we go. Tan inverse of what? 12 over 5, positive. See how I ignored the negative 5 for now? Positive 12 over positive 5. Okay. So hit the buttons on my calculator here. I'm getting 67.4 degrees. Now, that's first quadrant. 67.4, right? That, that, what that means is this angle right here is actually 67.4. But I've got to give the angle as it is in the second, because I can see this vector is really in the second quadrant. So how far from there to there? That's, what we real, that's the real angle theta we need. Is that making sense there? Because it's really in the second quadrant. 67.4 is the reference angle. It's with reference to the x-axis, isn't it? It's 67.4 off the x-axis. So what is that angle really? Well, it's all the way to here, 180, back up 67.4, isn't it? 180 minus 67.4. That's 112.6. Answer C. Oh, no, answer A. Got to forget about the 13th thing. Answer A on 5, yeah. We good there? Is that making sense? So, what do you do for the angle? Tangent inverse of positive J over I. Get your answer. Put it in the correct quadrant. Adjust it. All right. On that, questions on that one? Okay, a force of 5 pounds acts in the direction of 8 degrees to the horizontal. The force moves an object along a straight line from point 0.86 to point 0.20. 13, with distance measured in feet. Find the work done by the force, round the answer to one place. Okay, so what are they talking about? So basically, these are the ones we did, the work problems. Remember the work problems? Find the work. Find the work. Work. Work is a force vector dotted with a distance vector. Remember that? Force vector, dot product, distance vector. So what's the force? Five pounds, eight degree to the horizontal. So the force vector is at eight degrees to the flat, to the horizontal. Eight degrees above the horizontal, and it's five pounds. So that means there's a horizontal and there's a vertical component to that force vector. Right? When you push at an angle, eight degrees, there's a sideways component to your push, and there's a small upward component to your push, to the force that's acting on that point, right? How do you find those? Remember, the force vector is 8 cosine 8 degrees I, not 8, where did I get the 8? 5, cosine 8 degrees I plus 5 
sine 8 degrees J. Remember, it's always cosine of the angle I, because cosine is sideways, huh? See how we've had that all the way through the course? Cosine is X, sine is up, down, Y, isn't it? So compute that on your calc. Well, I just leave it like that for now. What's the distance vector? Well, the distance, it's going from 8, 6 to 20, 13. You can put that on a graph if you want. So there's a point here that's over 8, up 6, and some other point here that's over 20, up 13. So you've got to find the distance vector that takes you from 8, 6 to 20, 13. It goes from over 8 to over 20 and from up 6 to up 13. Everybody seeing that? So what's the sideways component? That's that's 12 to the right, isn't it? And this is up 7. Over 12, up 7. So it's 12i plus 7j. Everybody see how I did that? I subtracted the two x values. 20 minus 8 is 12, right? 20 minus 8 gives you the sideways, the i component. They're moving that object 12 units to the right, right? They're going from over 8 to over 12. They moved it 12 units to the right, and they moved the object up from a height of 6 to a height of 13, 6 up to 13. They moved it up 7. They moved it over 12 and up 7. That's the distance vector. The distance vector has a sideways component and a vertical component of movement, I and a J. All right, and so what's the work done? It's the force vector dotted with the distance vector. How do you dot? You just multiply and add them up, huh? Just multiply and add them up. So I take 5 cosine 8 times 12. 5, whoops, whoops, whoops. Got in here. I'll put the 12 in the front. 12 times 5 cosine 8 degrees plus, no more I. Remember, when you do dot product, the I and the J are done. We drop them. We just multiply the two I numbers and drop the I, multiply the two J numbers and drop the J, add them up. Here we go, 7 times 5 sine 8 degrees. No more J. Drop the I, drop the J. That's what a dot product means. And then just hit the buttons on your calculator. I'm getting 64 point Three, or is it none of the above? It's C. Yeah, that's what I got. I, I, I hit none of the other, so it was, so it was wrong on the scan Yeah, did you guys get this answer too? Did I mess up? Yeah, I put C R E. Yeah. So you got? Did you get six four point three like I did? Yeah. I ah, wrong answer on this thing. Boy, it's the second wrong answer. Sixty four point three. We good to there? Questions to there? Let me see how I did that. So, you just got to find the, the force vector, which again is 5 cosine 8 plus 5 sine 8. The distance vector, just subtract the x value, subtract the y values, get the i and the j, dot them together, which just means multiply them, drop the i's and j's, add them up. Wow, they really got far off. They got to gotta be rounding more careful. All right, let's take a look at number 7. So, back to the one triangle, two triangles thing. So let's give it a try. I'm going to draw what they're talking about here. We got A, B, C. And they're saying B is 41 degrees. Little a is 4. Little b is 3. So, all right, we're supposed to figure. Can we do law of signs? Yeah. Yes, we can. Law of signs. It's because we have a pair, huh? We have an angle side pair. Whenever you have a pair, Jump into law of sines. So, um, and then I'm looking for angle A here, right? So I'm going to go the sine of A. I always start with what I don't know. You don't have to, but it might be easy. So what I, what I want to know, what I don't know, is angle A. So put him right on the top. Sine of A over 4 is, and then I'm putting sines on the top on this one, so I'll be consistent. Sine of 41 over 3. There we go. Diagonal, diagonal. 3 sine A is 4. Sine 41, divide by the 3. So A, bring it over here. So A will be inverse sine. A will be inverse sine of 4 
sine 41 over 3. A equals whatever that says. Whoops. Yeah, messing up. Sine inverse. 4 times sine 41 divided by 3. So I'm getting 61 uh, degrees. So I got A is 61. Now, how do we know? So I think you're good with all that, but here's the question that might be a little more confusing. How do you know one triangle, two triangles, all that? It's certainly not no triangle, right? You get no triangle when you get air. So we didn't, we didn't get an air. It's not a no triangle. But how do you know like if it's one triangle or two? I don't know if I've been crystal clear on this, so let me be more clear than I've been. Whenever you use law of signs, whenever you do inverse sign, you know, and use law of signs. Whenever you do inverse sign, that's the real problem. Whenever you do inverse sign, there's two possible answers. Now, they might not both be valid triangles, but there are two possible angle measurements, right? I mean, if I, well, I don't want to use up too much time, but remember back when we were solving uh, the hardest test, the last test, test three, if somebody gave me the sign of angle A is, is, you know, 0.7, well, that could be that could be somewhere here or here. It could be in the first or second quadrant. Sine is positive. All students take calculus. Sine is positive here and here. First and second quadrant. There's two places, right? There's two places that that, that could be. So sine inverse. So anyway, long story short, sine inverse always has two possible answers. So let me write that. So sine inverse always must, let me, let me say after, after hitting sine inverse, here's the way you should think, practically, for Wednesday. After hitting the sine inverse button on your calculator, you always must find other angle, and, and the way you find the other one is always 180 minus the answer you got, because it's in the second quadrant. Like I said, it's, it's the same reference angle in the second, so it's 180 back up, same amount. So you say, okay, so I got 61, so the other one then is 180 minus 61, which is 119. So that is another angle for sine, but will that make a valid triangle or not? Well, then you just try it out. What do I mean you try it out? You put that answer in there. So in other words, you draw another triangle right beside this one, okay? And we, we, just, we just got the answer for A, 61. So let me put that in right here. 61, and then we just got 119, so let me put that in, 119, everything else is the same, this is still 41, this is still 4, and this is 3, let me hold up there for a minute, so everybody see what I'm doing, so here's what you want to put in your 3 by 5 card, anytime you hit the sign inverse button, there's another <coughs> angle, 180 minus that one, you got to draw the triangle and say, 61's one answer, 119's another, maybe. Now, what do I mean by maybe? Well, you add up the two angles you have. 119 and 41, if you add those up, you get, I don't know, 160, right? So the other one is 20 to make 180, and that's possible. If those first two added up to be more than 180, then you know that's not a possible second triangle because you're already more degrees than you're allowed in a triangle if you're over 180, right? If this, what, am I, what do I mean? Like if this angle, instead of 119, had come out to be 140, then I would have went 140 plus the 41 I've already got. No way, I'm already over 180. There's no second triangle. Everybody see that? That's how you know whether the second angle answer leads to a second possible triangle or not. So one more time. Whenever you get sine inverse in your calculator, you must take this. You, we don't have to do this for cosine inverse, do we? Law cosine is not required. Don't even worry about it. That's the, that's the one nice thing about law cosine. But law sines, sine inverse, you've always got to find the other angle, 180 minus the answer you got. Get that one. Stick it in the triangle and see if they add up to be less than 180. If so, you've got some room left for the other third angle. And it's a possible triangle. If not, you have no second triangle possible. So we do. We have a second triangle possible. This could be 20. Now, what about, what about this, guys? 61 and 41. It's at 102. That leaves, what, 78 for the other angle? 
So there's two possible triangles. So two triangles, but then they didn't give the right answer, did they? They said 29 and 151, so it should be E. So it's kind of weird. It is two triangles, but it's not those two triangles. They gave the wrong answers for A. So it's none of the answers they gave there. It's two triangles where A is 61 or 119. Good? On that, does that make sense? Whenever you do sine inverse, find the other angle. You just got to know cold for Wednesday. Sine inverse, other angle, 180 minus. Get it, stick it in the triangle, see if it works. Questions I can answer on that? Maybe. Yes. We never get through these, do we? Um, okay. How do we do this? Yeah, 9 and 10 are hard. Um, or maybe I should skip 9 and 10 and move on and get other things done. It may All right. Um, Heron's formula, triangle ABC. Yeah. So if you have A, A is T, you don't need to draw a triangle. What am I drawing a triangle? You don't need to draw a triangle. So um, remember the Heron's formula? It is, you, you, you have this thing called S, which is half the perimeter. So S is half of A plus B plus C. S is half of 10 plus 10 plus 16, which is 20, 30, 70, 18. So S is 18. And then the formula is the area equals, what is it? The square root of S times S minus A, times S minus B, times S minus C. You want to put that in your 3 by 5, right? Like that. And so the area is square root of S, which is 18, times 18 minus A, 18 minus B, 18 minus C. Put in A, B, and C. So the three sides are 10, 10, and 16, square root of 18 times 8 times 8 times 2. Hit the buttons on your calculator. Uh, 18 times 8 times 8 times 2. I'm getting 48. None, none of the above? Yep, yeah, none of the above. Good. All right. All right, we'll move on. Isn't that weird that you can find the area inside the middle of a triangle by just knowing the sides? It seems like you would need to know something about the angles. I think that's a surprising formula to me, that you can find the area inside a triangle just by knowing the three sides. Surprising. 2,000 years ago, they came up with that. Isn't that funny? You know, I don't know. Some, a lot of math is really old, right? 2,000 years ago, some Greek guy came up with that. So, all right, so we have, so they're just giving me three sides. We've got A, B, C, so cross from A is A, cross from B is 5, cross from C is 4. So they're just giving me three sides, and they want me to solve the triangle, which means, like, find the other angles. Yeah, they want all three angles. How do I do that? I don't have any angles at all. So can I use law of sines? No, because no, I don't have a matching pair. So we must use law of cosines, huh? We can't use law of sines. We don't have an angle side pair. So I'll use law of cosines. Uh, I'll just go C squared. You could use any of the three versions, whether you put A squared in the front, B squared, or C squared, doesn't matter. Any of them will work. Minus 2AB cosine C, for example. So C squared, which is that one, so 4 squared, is A squared plus B squared. 8 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 8 times 5 cosine of angle C. We're going to find angle C here. Everybody see that? Remember how law of cosines works? And so that's 16 is 64 plus 25 minus, I think, 2 times 8, 10, 80. Cosine C. And uh, add those up. What's that? 89, these two? 89, yeah. So subtract 89. From both, bring it over here. That's some number I don't know. That's minus 73. Minus 80, cosine C, divided by minus 80. Boom, so seven, drop the two negatives. Two negatives cancel. Cosine C is uh, 73 eightieths. So therefore, C is the inverse cosine 
of 73 is. And when you use inverse cosine, you don't have to worry about two answers. There's only just one answer. Cosine inverse, 73 <coughs> divided by 80. I'm getting 24 degrees for C. So we're already down to answers A or D, right? Already down to answers A and D. So, or none of the above. So we got C is 24 degrees. Now, so I'll put that in, 24 degrees. Now I can go use law of sines, can't I? Once you have an angle side match, once you have an angle side match like these two, you can use law of sines. You okay if I move into law of sines now and erase some of that law of cosines work? So now use law of sines. So, so law of sines. So I'll use C, and, and what am I going to find? Uh, it doesn't matter. Like, I'll find um, angle A over here. That will be great. So I want the sine of A over 8. You can start with A or B. It doesn't matter. Sine of A over 8 is the sine of 24 over 4. Is that good to there? Like that? Diagonal, diagonal, solve for capital A. Like that, zing, zing. 4 sine A is 8 sine 24 degrees, like that. Solve for A, divide by 4. And bring it on down here. So we get, cancels out, so A is... Inverse sine of 8 sine 24 over 4. So 2. Uh, the wrong button. Inverse sine of the answer. I'm getting 54 degrees. A is 54. Wait a minute, is that right? Oh. What's going on there? Um, you didn't take the smaller side, so you have to find the other sign. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, I should, I should make that more clear for you. Yeah, that's the right answer. Remember, I just hit sign inverse. So the other one, you always got to find the other one when you do sign inverse. You got to take 180 minus 54. I would get 126, 24. Oh, yeah, mine actually is 26. See, they're doing the rounding thing, 125. That is answer A, the 125. It's the other answer. Now, that's kind of tricky, isn't it? You're like, so you got to do the other? How do you know you're supposed to do the other? Yeah, good point. I, I really should have on that one started with the smaller. Yeah, let me, let me back up and make a point, and this will be my last point, and we're out of time. Because of this very problem, because of this very problem, Whenever you're about to do law of sines like this and you have your choice with two sides, you should start with the smaller side. Why? Because because the two angle the two because you just don't want to mess with the the two option thing with law of sines is such a pain, right? We'd rather not mess with it. There's a way to not have to mess with it. And that is when you have your options, when you you already have these guys and you're looking at should I do the 8 or should I do the five? Do the smaller one. So when two sides are options for law of signs, choose smaller side. Choose the smaller side because that will go with the smaller angle and you won't have to mess around with the 180 thing. So if you just redo this and say, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the 5 with the B. So I'll go sine B over 5, and then that's sine 24 over 4. Diagonal, diagonal. You'll get the answer straight out first time. Right there. So, yeah, let me go on. You'll, you'll get B is 31 degrees, and you'll know it's answer A straight. All right, yeah, I'll try to throw up some more of these on YouTube this afternoon. They should be up. Our test is...